Boom, what up, YouTube and Pythonistas on internet? How are you doing? And welcome to another video on Python and database. Today we are going to talk about transactions, but before we, we do that, I would just like to take the opportunity to thank you all for watching this video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, like the video at the end. If you enjoy the content, share the content, do comment. And if you uh, want to have access to the source code of all these video tutorials, you can get it at this link, which is also in the description. This is a membership site that you can uh, subscribe to. Uh, and that way you can support me monthly. And you can, you will find all the database uh, uh, files here, also from the previous videos. So I'm uploading it uh, whenever I'm doing this video. I'm uploading the files here so you can have access to the, this as long as you have subscribed to this membership. So let's get cracking. Let's get first into back here. Okay, so when we are talking about transactions, so one of the key features of uh, relational databases is the use of transactions to maintain a consist consistent internal state. With transactions enabled, several changes can be made through one connection uh, without affecting any other users until the results are committed and flushed to the actual database. So when preserving changes, uh, changes to the database, either through insert or update statements, need to be saved by explicitly calling commit, the commit method. This uh, requirement gives an application an opportunity to make several uh, related changes together. So they are stored atomically instead of incrementally and it avoids the situation where partial updates are seen by different clients connecting to the database uh, simultaneously. The effect of calling commit can be seen uh, with a program example that I'm going to show you right now that uses several connections to the database. A new row is inserted with the first connection and then two attempts are made to read it back using separate connections. So let's try it out. If I can just find there is spider. So this is not what this is not the video I'm looking for. Commit. This is the commit part. So if we run this file. Transactions commit. Uh, 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 yeah, because I already tried it on the other. So uh, it, obviously I can just run it once. So I'll just show you guys what's what it's doing. We uh, import SQLite. We get the uh, our database name, define a function for show our projects. And we can see here, uh, before changes, it has no, we are, we are, uh, there is not, no changes here. And after the changes, we insert uh, some data into our database. And without committing it, it doesn't show anything. And yeah, this is the before commit and this is after commit. So we can see there here, it's the, the whole process of doing the transactions and committing. So it's a very, very simple, uh, simple example. So, and uh, I haven't, uh, I, instead of typing, I'm just showing you the files. As, as I told you, you can download these files and examine them yourself for the sake of uh, time saving. So, 
And the next thing we are going to talk about is uh, discarding changes. Uncommitted changes can also be discarded entirely using a rollback. The commit and rollback methods are usually called from different parts of the same uh, try except block with errors triggering our rollbacks. So we're just going to simulate some errors. And this is the rollback. And you can see here I have run it already. So if I try to run it again, it will throw an error. So the same thing, we import the SQLite, show projects. Uh, this is the first connection. And before changes, it shows us the project name and the value that we entered from the previous example. And then we insert, uh, uh, insert or actually delete from uh, from our project from our table, and we can see here after delete. So then, then we simulate an error. It throws an error here, and then we do the rollback. It says here, this is a rollback. So that is a very, very simple examples, example of calling a rollback and the changes to the data is, database are no longer present. So that's it for this quick video, guys. And again, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the like button. Uh, share the com content or to leave a comment or and you can all remember you can get access to all source code for this all the video tutorials from all of my videos all the playlists so that way you can support me so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video thank you